praise the Lord. Are you happy to be in the presence of God? This morning, by the grace of God, I've titled my message, Joyous Thanksgiving. Tell someone, Joyous Thanksgiving. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18. I read the NLT. You say, always be thankful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. Mark that word. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. He said, Lord, always be thankful. See, thanksgiving is a spiritual thing. And the joy of the Lord is the fruit of the Spirit. So when you bring thanksgiving... And joy. What are you doing? You are activating the presence of God in our life. No matter the circumstances that we face, no matter, God says, maintain an attitude of thanksgiving. He says, in all things, that's what we read. In all things, what do we do? We give thanks. Hallelujah. We give thanks because we know we can never be disadvantaged. Why do I know that I can never be disadvantaged? Because his word has said in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, all things, tell your neighbor, all things, all things. work together things. for my good. Hallelujah. Do you ever wonder what our life would be like if we maintain this kind of attitude of thanksgiving? If we maintain a life, a healthier life of thanksgiving? If your heart is full of gratitude, if you are thankful every day, even in difficult situations, you are maintaining thanksgiving. You are full of joy. Hallelujah. Why are you full of joy? Because of all you're thinking about, all the good stuff God has done for you. Hallelujah. Even everything, you know that when you give thanks to God, what happened? God pour back the same thing into you. He releases it. Why do I give thanks? Because I know God is bigger than my problem. I know that he's bigger than the challenge. So God is pouring out strength. When I give thanks to him, he's pouring out strength, peace, Back to me. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. See, it's easy to see all the wrong, all the things that we like in our life, but we have to develop this principle of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. In all circumstances, you have to be purposeful, thanking God for that which you have done. You know, it's not complicated at all to be thankful. It's not complicated. In the morning when you wake up, while you're brushing your teeth, what do you say? Say, Father, I thank you for what? For today. While you're taking your bath, you say, Father, what? I thank you for today for my health. Because it's easy that it's not everybody that woke up and brushed his teeth and take bath by himself. So as a child of God, you are thanking God that, look, Father, I thank you. So while you're getting ready, getting dressed, and going to work, what do you do? You say, Father, I thank you because I have somewhere I'm going to. I have a job. Hallelujah. That you have a job, and this is it. So as you keep as we keep meditating on the goodness of God, what happens? Continually, joy will be poured out into your life. Hallelujah. As you keep meditating, in Psalm 126, from verse 1 to 6, I'll just read Psalm 126. It says, when the Lord restored the fortune of Zion, you know, we were like them. We are like those who dream. Then our mouth was full with laughter, and our tongue with what? A shout of joy. Then it was said among the nation, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice. Restore our fortune, O Lord, like the water of Nebo. May those who sow what in tears reap in shout of joy, and those, okay, those who come bearing precious seed, sow it, shall go home with shout of joy, carrying their sheaves. Praise the Lord. See, first of all, if you read this psalm, you will think like at the first glance, it's a perfect psalm of thanksgiving. But when you look at it deeply, you understand that the writer wasn't writing it in the place of thanking God or the things he has done. But rather, he has the memory of joy. He said, when the Lord again turned the tablet of Zion, he had the memory of joy. It was written in a time of sowing seed in the presence of God, weeping for all that they have been lost. It's also written for us at this time of pandemic. We're just thinking, how, has, how shall it be? Waiting for them. The writer was writing 
as long as Israelite, they came back, you know, that psalm was just written when the Israelite came back from Jerusalem. They were so joyful that they were united. They were united in their homeland, and things has gone now. He's in that position, things has gone sour. Things has gone bitter. This was when the water was written, the water of wealth. But they had a memory of thanksgiving and blessing that has dried up. Praise the Lord. How did they write, get to this? How did the writer think about how this memory of joy? Because what, he had the faith of their forefathers. The, he recycled the stories of their forefathers, what they have said concerning them, what the word of God has said. As a child of God, do you have the memory of thanksgiving? Do you have the memory of what God has done in your life? What do you say? Praise the Lord. See, it comes from the belief what when he wrote that Psalm 126, it comes from the belief that what? Because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Though trouble what is now, but what joy comes what? In the morning. Hallelujah. Joy comes in the morning. They are full of joy. Joy proceeds thanksgiving. Tell your neighbor, joy, joy. proceeds thanksgiving. The man at the beautiful gate in Acts chapter 3 from verse 6 to 12. In Acts chapter 6, in Acts chapter 3, 6 to 12, the man at the beautiful gate. Peter and John was going to the temple. And what happened? I'll paraphrase it. They said, they saw the man at the beautiful gate. He had been lying there. Peter said, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, I will give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The man was looking at them. The man wasn't thankful. He was just looking at them. But what happened? He grabbed him and lifted him up. When he grabbed him, there is a lift of joy into the man's life. If you read further, while I was studying, the first thing that got my attention, I've been reading this passage several years, but it, it got to my attention that what happened? Immediately the man got the testimony. Where did the man? The Bible says he entered into the temple of God and what? And gave God praise. And all that saw him, what did they do? They gave God thanks. They worship God because of what God has done for them. My brother, my sister, when God has given you the testimony, what do you do? Do you go back to give thanks to God? Do you go back in the house of God to worship him? To say, Father, I thank you. Oh, now you have had the big break and now it's no more. The party you do, do you do it for the kingdom of God? What do you do? This brings to mind when Jesus Christ was teaching to them, you know, he was he told the lepers, the Bible tells us, he told the lepers what happened. He told them, go and show yourself. That's in Luke chapter 17 from verse 12 to 19. You know, Jesus was sitting in a certain village. What happened? He said, he, said, he told the lepers, there were 10 of them. He said, go and show yourself to the priest. He said, as they went and showed themselves to the priest, what happened? Just one, only one came back to give thanks. And just imagine what happened to the, that one that came back to give thanks got more than he desired. Imagine that we all came to Qatar, we all got job, and you know, some of us have migrated, some are still here. But there are some people that are still here. Be planted in the house of the God, because out of our belly shall flow out rivers of living water. He said, Imagine nine of them, after the, the one has. He came back and gave thanks. What happened? He said, God, he, he got what? He got hold. Jesus Christ made him move. So, leprosy is a disease that eats the fingers. So, now he got hold. The whole of his finger are replenished. The other night that didn't come back to give thanks, what happened? Their fingers didn't come back. So, imagine just one that gave thanks. They look at him and they saw, you know, because they were all together. They were all in the same time. Now, you have seen this one. That have given thanks, his hand is plenty. So when he look at the, all the other one, what happened? He said he will be full of joy, exuberant joy. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, he said, Therefore, by him, let us continually, what do we do? Offer unto him the sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to God. A lifetime of gratitude activates the blessing of God. If you're, if you're lifetime, if you're full of joy, Joy is a fruit of the Spirit again. Joy does not come when you have everything. That's why he wrote in that Psalm 126, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them. That is a memory. They didn't have it. But they are thanking God. He said, well, we give thanks. He said, he said those that come bearing precious seed, 
You know, they go back, they return back. What, what? Rejoicing, they were weeping. But they go back as they drop their seed, they are going back, they are rejoicing because of what God has done for them. What are you thinking? What has God done for you as a child of God? Do you maintain this attitude of God? Praise the Lord. By coming to give thanks to God for his miracle, he got something more. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66, 1 to 4. The Bible says, King J, it say, Shout joyfully to God and all earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how all inspiring are your work. Your enemy will cling before you because what? Of your great strength. All earth will worship you, you and sing to you. They will sing praises to you. Praise the Lord. Never complain about what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. Over failure, over disappointment, you're just complaining. No, never. Rather, let your heart be, be in a state of thanksgiving. Let your heart be full of joy. The, the songwriter say, count your blessing, name them one by one. And it will, be so, and it will surprise you what, what, what the Lord has done. In the place of counting their testimony, or in the place of you counting your testimony, what do you do? You're what? You're giving praise to God. You're rejoicing. For that which God has done. Praise the Lord. See, joy comes from that in-depth satisfaction of what God has done for you, of the memory of what you know that God has done for you. It is important to continually give thanks to God, to celebrate his goodness and many blessings upon your life. Worship him from the depth of your heart. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We thank God from out of our share of having God, of having received abundantly, of what God has done for you. That is how you thank God. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19. Jeremiah 30, verse 19. He said, out of them, what? He said, out of them shall proceed, what? Thanksgiving, and the voice of them that makes many. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. And I will also give glory, and they shall not be small. Praise the Lord. This is a perfect, a perfect word for you. See, out of their belly, okay, out of them shall pursue what? Thanksgiving. This brings to mind when Jesus Christ was teaching, or when, no, he, he, he was preaching to them. What did Jesus Christ do? He said he took the bread. What did he do? He broke the bread. After he broke the bread, the five loaves of bread and two fishes, what happened? It multiplied. He said, Father, I thank you. So, the same thing this Jeremiah is telling us. For those ones, as you give thanks for that little job, for that many job you think you have, he said, Father, I thank you because I have a place I'm going this morning. Father, I thank you because I can even brush my teeth. Father, I thank you because what you have done for me. They thank God. Hallelujah. There, means there will be a multiplication because you have thanked God. That's the same thing that Jesus Christ has taught them. He said he broke the bread and we saw that they had overflow. Praise the Lord. They had overflow. They, he said, out of our belly flows our rivers of living water. And a songwriter said, there is an, what? an overflow, an abundance of favor. Hallelujah. Psalm 95, 1 to 5. Psalm 95, 9 to, 1 to 5. He said, oh, come, let us what? Sing unto the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the Lord, the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with what? Thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all God. In his hand has deep places in the earth. The strength of our hill is his also. The sea is his and he made it and the hand formed the dry land. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at your life over the years. Look at your life over the years. You'll find us something to be grateful. You'll find us something to thank God about. Something worth celebrating. You're not just thanking him for what he has done. You're also thanking him for what you know that he is going to do. You know, I come from a tribe, you know, where they say, if you thank a king for what he has done, what does the king do? He do more. I remember when I, I went to get married, there are these people, they play drums, uh, you know, and they, as they keep playing, what do you do? He keep doning out cash. Why? Because they are praising God. Just imagine, I told a story a certain time, I think in church, that, you know, somebody was praying to God, and God said what? Uh, angel, go and answer him. And another person was giving chance to God. And the angel asked him, God, should I go? God said, no, not this time. I will go. So as you keep thanking God for what he has done, he will do yet another 
world. There are some important things I just want to say in Thanksgiving. Four important things quickly to you to show appreciation of Thanksgiving. He said there is a prayer of Thanksgiving. A prayer of Thanksgiving is from your heart. A prayer of Thanksgiving is from your heart. You are appreciating God for the most successful thing he has done. So far, January has passed. February, March, we are now in April, the first, uh, uh, about the first quarter of the year to end. Uh, you're thinking, what am I going to do? The best thing you can do is to give a prayer of thanksgiving. Number two, say, offer unto him the worship and praise of thanksgiving. There is a prayer of thanksgiving. There is a worship of thanksgiving. Where you are full of praise, your joy is exorbitant. You know, joy, again, is from your spirit. So you're praising God exorbitantly for what he has done for you from your spirit. Number three, you say, there is your testimony. What you give to God is your testimony of what? Of thanksgiving. Where you are, tell it to someone. Like we heard the testimony. You say, you have nothing. You're thinking what? You're not thinking about what you have not achieved this past three months that has gone. But you're thinking what? Of your goal, of your future. Because, because he lived, like our songwriter uh, sang this morning, he said, because he looked what? I have hope for tomorrow. Praise the Lord. You're thankful. Why? Because the foundation of your spirit, the foundation of your faith, that God gave it to you. Hallelujah. You're thankful for your hope in the spirit. Hallelujah. We are, our text this morning said in Isaiah chapter 12 from verse 3 to 4. He said, joyfully... NLP, I'll read, Isaiah 12, 3 to 4. He said, joyfully you will, you will pull out bucket of water from what? The well of salvation. God has given us faith, so you're joyful. Again, my scripture, out of your belly, what? Flow out rivers of living water. So, with joy shall you draw water. Whoa, hallelujah. He said, with joy shall you draw water. So, as you give chance, you're drawing out of it, out of the well of salvation. Then you say, Ask him anything. Shout to the nation. Mm. Ask him as you're drawing water. What do you do? When the Lord again turned the captivity of Zion, they had the memory of God. So you what? You ask him anything. When you ask him anything, he said, tell the nation that he has done and spread the good news and great reputation. Praise the Lord. Number four, he said, give an offering of thanksgiving. God, give the Lord a special thanksgiving offering and project yourself into a greater future he has planned for you. You give God. You know, you don't eat your seed. You don't just get money. You know, you, you don't give your time. You give God. It, these things are easy to do. You give God an offering, a special offering. Look at what Solomon did he, he, and what did God do to him. He said, Solomon did something that has never been done before. So as you come to church, you're thinking about the first Friday of every month. We're giving thanksgiving. So you're giving God a special thanksgiving. The whole of today, you make your mark in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. As you go to school, in conclusion, you thank God. Carry this joy of thanksgiving. From church today to your home, to your office, everywhere you go, make the entire day a day of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is from the Lord. Hallelujah. Knowing that the joy comes from deep within you and it bubbles out thanksgiving. Give thanks with a grateful heart. That's what the Lord said, the songwriter. He said, Give thanks to God with a grateful heart. You know, give thanks. Rise up. Let us pray. Rise up. Let us pray. Just begin to give thanks. Tell your neighbor, stay. Tell your neighbor, stay. stay. In perpetual state of thanksgiving. If you're here this morning, you cannot give thanks if you're not born again. If you're here this morning, you cannot give thanks why you're not born again. Just if you're anyone that wants to rededicate his life to God, let us thank him. If there is no one, let us just keep praying. Thank him. Just take him. Thank him. I want you to say this prayer. Say, Father, thank you that I can be thankful in all circumstances today because you are bigger than any circumstances. You are always doing exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all I could ever ask or imagine. I choose to meditate on your goodness. 
in Jesus' name. Turn it to prayer. Just turn it to prayer. Say, Father, I chose to meditate, to be thankful. I chose to thank you, to meditate, to be thankful. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us take this song. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let our earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord.